Hey all y'all, welcome back to Knit Tea Live! I know, it's been a couple of weeks. Thank you for joining me today, whether it's right now in the present, while I am talking, or on the playback. Because the important thing is that you're here at some point. That's the beauty of the internet. Anyway, if you are here right now, please make sure to say hi, so I know that you're here, and I can say hi back because I like saying hi to everybody. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's been a couple weeks since my last live stream. Last weekend, I was a little under the weather. Um, I guess two weekends ago now, my daughter had a little bit of a cold, just a little, it was like, my daughter's immune system, man, it, like everything with her, it acts fast. She had a cold, she had a little bit of a fever on Saturday. Sunday, she the fever was gone. She was still sniffly. By Tuesday, she was fine. It was so bizarre. But what happens is she gets sick, I get sick, and a lot of times with me, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when I get a little like respiratory virus, um, my I get bronchitis. I had a really bad case of bronchitis in college, and since then, it's like I get any little viral whatever and my bronchies go not again we're inflaming now so i had a little bit of bronchitis um i felt fine i never spiked a fever um but yeah i was just like you know what i think i just need to rest <laughs> and so i didn't do live stream last week so that's why i wasn't here last week hello samantha thank you for joining me today welcome 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 so I'm very excited. Uh, I got hopefully a feature rich knit tea live today. I'm going to go over, as I said in my various posts and in the description, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, I have my morning coffee. I'm getting a little, <laughs> I can't believe I just did that on camera. <laughs> I'm getting a little flimmy. I get flimmy sometimes. I haven't cleared out all my morning phlegm. I'm sorry, that is just super gross and probably too much information, but that's what happens. Also, now my nose is itching, so I'm going to turn away so you don't see me on camera scratch my nose. Just a minute. Oh my gosh. I swear, my nose, it's like it knows it's about to be on camera and it waits to get itchy right when I start a live stream. And then it's all like, hey... Hey, Carrie, I'm here. Hey, don't you want to touch me? <laughs> don't you want to give me a good, like, rub? Anyway, um, where was I? Went off on a tangent. Yes, yeah, so today on the live stream, I am going to show you the big blanket repair that I have been doing. Um, was it? A couple of live streams ago, I forget. Hey, Julian, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, a couple of live streams ago, I showed a blanket a friend has asked me to help save. And I started the repair this past week. So I'm going to show you the progress of that. I've been kind of tracking the progress on Instagram. So if you want to keep kind of up to date on how that is going, make sure that you follow me on Instagram. You can find all my social media down in the description box below. Also, just occurred to me, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because giving videos a thumbs up lets YouTube know not just that I'm a space worth checking out, but it also lets them know, hey, let people know this video is worth watching. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you where I'm at with the blanket repair, kind of talk to you a little bit about how that it's going, and if anybody out there has any tips or tricks for me, please share, because this, oh, it fell, sorry. My overhead cable fell, it's, been, it's just gonna live there, and I'm gonna just live with the fact that it's there. So, I'm gonna show you the blanket repair. Also, I did go, I got my hair done, uh, completely COVID safe, getting my hair done. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to fool anybody by the hair color, which is obviously much darker than what it usually is. Hi, Bear! So I'm just going to admit that I caved and I got my grays covered and I got my hair cut. It's also why my hair's straight, 
because <laughs> my hair is only ever like this after I go to the hairdresser. And, um, but it was completely COVID safe. I mean, like, the salon that I went to, my, my hairstylist slash really good friend, because she's a personal friend of mine, um, the salon that she has her chair at, her business at, um, they put, like, a new filtration system in and UV light system into the ventilation system to clean the air and she has like a UV light in her studio and cleans everything like a whole process in between clients and she's masked and has a face shield and I was masked the entire time um like there were masks everywhere hand sanitizer everywhere I mean it was about as risk-free as you could possibly be <laughs> Is what I'm saying. But here's the other thing. My hairdresser, her place is right next door, right next door to a Michaels, a really nice Michaels. The Michaels by, by me, by my house, is a little. If you watched my vlog, you saw some of it. It's a smaller Michaels. The yarn section is not great. Um, but the Michaels by my hairdresser is bigger and nicer, and I always go into it after getting my hair done. So I did get a couple things. I will show them off to you, and I'm going to discuss a video idea in terms of what this little trip inspired. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. And there is a big, big thing happening in the, you know, accessible fiberverse that we will discuss through as part of Pattern Spotlight. So I've got a lot of things planned, and if we have time, I might even talk to you about my Thanksgiving dinner plans because I'm probably the one person in the country who's excited for Thanksgiving. And um, we are, it's just gonna be the three of us at the house, um, but that's okay, that's what we did last year anyway. <laughs> there were reasons, but um, it ended up just being the three of us, but I love cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Um, it's not something I've always had the opportunity to do in the 20 plus years that I have now lived in Los Angeles, but I actually really enjoy cooking Thanksgiving dinner. I'm looking forward to cooking this Thanksgiving dinner. Um, I will be cooking a full turkey, a, a smallish one, a smaller one, but I will be cooking a full turkey because I don't think that... If you want turkey and you're like me and you want dark meat, I don't care how many people are going to be at that dinner table. There's no reason not to cook a full turkey because there's so much you can do with the turkey after the fact. Like, you can have sandwiches. I make a big pot of turkey soup with whatever leftovers I don't get through in a reasonable amount of time. So, I am all about cooking the full turkey. <laughs> I feel like hashtag cook the turkey. Hey, Star Pony, welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to admit to something now. I always get a little bit nervous when I hit the button to go on live on the live stream. There's this moment I have as I wait to see if anyone shows up where I'm like, is anyone gonna come? Now, you guys are amazing and you come week after week and I'm so blessed that you're here with me as often as you are, and thank you. I'm incredibly grateful that you spend this hour, sometimes hour 10, hour 15 minutes with me. And, um, but having a week off, you know, people get, things happen. And I was like, oh, oh. But anyway, you're all here and I'm so grateful. And if you show up on um, the playback, I'm grateful that you watch this on playback. I am I'm always grateful for all the views. So, who is ready to see, let's see, what should we start with? Let's start with the blanket repair. Let's start with that. It is massive. Oh my god. Um, actually, let me see something real quick. I'm going to go over to my Instagram. And it might take a second. Let me get this, though. Let me get this. This has been one of the most challenging things I have ever, ever done. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Um, something just fell off my desk. It's fine. I don't know what fell. Probably just a needle. <laughs> just a, I 
have so many random needles of various sorts in my craft room. Okay. So, is my Instagram up? Yes. Sorry. Sorry, this is bad TV right now. Although, it, live stream. <laughs> Do -do -do. Profile. I really wish that Instagram was as functional on a computer desktop as it is on a phone or a tablet. Can we just have a moment on that? Like, it annoys the crap out of me that on Instagram, I cannot post from my computer. Because sometimes, I don't want to tap things out on my iPhone. And truth be told, I don't have a tablet. I used to, but I've never found a great use for tablets. For myself personally and what I end up doing a lot of times for bigger posts is I end up on like just Apple notes writing up a post so that then gets onto my phone and then I copy that on my phone and onto my Instagram it's just a pain it's a pain I don't know why I know it's just a pain so um, I don't have a photo this is this is the fullest photo okay so um, I'm gonna show you this for my Instagram through the desktop share. This is a photo of the blanket pre any repair. It this is not the full the full damage that was done, but um, it's you can see a little bit of it, and it's extensive, and it's actually more extensive than what even the photo shows because what I found out as I started uh, working on this is that there are areas where if you just look at it quickly, it looks like the yarn is there and it's fine. But then when you look closer, there are stitches where the yarn is just totally threadbare. It was, it's barely holding on for dear life. So um, this is like, I think on a tweet, I described it as doing exploratory surgery. Because <laughs> every time it's like, oh crap. I found something else and oh that's more damage than I thought yeah it's a bummer I feel very I mean I'm kind of so let me just show let me just show you so on the Instagram photo I'm gonna bring up the uh, this one right here so you can see in the photo right here right here in the middle is that little hole which almost looks like a moth hole that I have repaired and I'm going to let's bring up the overhead camera to composite this one so right here oh wow look how different the color looks this looks so much bluer than what it is in real life that's because of the lighting this is actually green that is amazing how that looks so blue suddenly but right here is where that little hole is so this has been a very successful repair in this area so I got that one done. I started here with something simple. And the back side even, this is the back of it, even looks really good. Like you can't really see even on the back side. I decided this was the wrong side. You can't even see right there where that happened. So I'm very proud of that. So repairing one little hole where maybe one or two stitches got pulled out is pretty straightforward. Um, after this is over, I will link a couple of the videos that I watched to kind of help me out with this. Here was the really great thing. I didn't even get into this. Uh, this one? Yes. I didn't even get into this, but I was really lucky because I figured out the yarn, the actual yarn that I'm 99% sure that this project was made with. Because when I got the blanket, I knew it was, um, I knew that this was acrylic yarn as soon as I got it. My friends seem to think it was cotton. She doesn't know a lot about fiber though, so I, I can understand why she thought maybe it was cotton. But I knew right away it was acrylic. And when I got it in my hand, I started feeling this. I was like, and I saw it in person and I saw the shine of it. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is Karen Simply Soft. I'm pretty sure. And I went on the Joann's website and I looked up Karen Simply Soft and I found the same color of yarn. This is an exact match. Like, it's unreal to me. I was just like, yes! Because my biggest, my biggest um, concern when I took this project on, yes, yay, figuring out the yarn. 
my biggest concern when I took this project on was how am I going to match this color? Because, like I said, in the video stream right now, this looks very blue. It's not. This is much more of a light teal, bluish green, almost... It's like a green version of Tiffany blue. <laughs> it's, it's like... It's, the lighting is like canceling out all the green in this. But uh, this is Robin Egg. This Karen Simply Soft is Robin Egg. And yeah, it was just sheer sort of luck in a way that this blanket was made with the yarn that I'm so familiar with anyway. And um, that they still make this color. Because <laughs> this blanket... This was made for my friend's oldest daughter, who is now like two and two, two and a half. And so the fact that they still had this color, that I was able to get this color. Is this a no dye lot color number? I can't tell from, I'm just looking quickly. It might be a no dye lot yarn. I'm not sure. Um, the, the yarn should say, but I'm not looking at it closely enough. So yeah, so this first little repair was a good confidence builder, good feeling that I could do this. And then I got to the next section. So I don't have, do I have the before photo on my Instagram? I'm pretty sure I do. Let me, I don't, I don't, that's okay. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to see if I have a photo of the before, and I don't. So, this next section that I did was when I got it. Um, it's up here. I have a lot of ends that I'm going to have to weave in that you can already tell. But this section, when I got to it, it looked like there were about three or four stitches that were missing, and just like two or three rows. But remember how I said when I started looking more closely at some of the yarn that looked like it was okay and then realizing that the yarn was actually more threadbare and almost falling apart than I realized? By the time that I got to a stable enough section of stitches that I could start building back up, because basically what I'm doing is I'm knitting patches in where these holes are. And by the time I got to a stable number of stitches that I could really work off of to create a patch, I had to ravel down seven rows altogether and about four stitches across. So this is what this area looks like. And how I did this was I actually knitted each row with a separate strand of yarn. That's why there's all these ends here. And I'm going to turn this around and you're going to have a better view of the area that was repaired. You can see it here, this section. Like, this is the edge of the original blanket. This is the row. And these are the columns of the original blanket. And all of this here, I basically re-knitted with that yarn. So what I'm going to do is, once I get all the ends woven in, and I'm feeling confident that I'm really, really done with this, I will trim back this, these strands of yarn here that I had to, some of these I actually had to cut because it was just being barely held together and it wasn't salvageable, the yarn in those areas. I'll trim these back and I'll try to tack down these sides as best as possible. One thing I just realized with this section right here, I can get one side of the blanket looking really good. Um, where I think if you just look at it quickly, you're probably not going to notice that a lot of repair was done, but I can't get both sides looking <laughs> that way. There's one side, as I told my friend, and she's very, like, she does not expect perfection. She just would like to keep the blanket for her daughter as a keepsake and not have it fall apart. So she's really just kind of looking at everything getting stabilized. And I could totally do that, but I want to make it as attractive as I can <laughs> at the same time. Um, so because of I'm a crafter and that's what we do. So I can get this side, one side, I had to choose one side to be a right side and one side to be a wrong side. I can get one side looking pretty seamless. 
And the other side, though, is that you're going to still be able to see the remnants of the damage. So I'm going to talk to my friend and say and ask her if she wants me to, like, maybe knit up a backing to attach to the back to hide the repair work on this side. Or if she's just like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> just let me have the blanket back. Either way, it's I just want her to be happy at the end and her daughter to be satisfied. But I will say this hole up here took me days. It took me just two or three days to A, work out how I was going to approach mending this and then actually being satisfied with the results. It took me quite a few days and even now I'm kind of looking at it and going, Ugh. one of the other challenging things of this is one hole, two holes, dealing with the tension is fine. Whole sections like this, trying to get a tension that looks even remotely similar, it's a challenge. But now I've gone down to an even more challenging section, and that is where, and again, you can't see it in the photo, but there's one section of damage where the cast on was actually ripped apart, and about four or five stitches were lost. And so that is down here below. This is the section I'm now working on down here and you can kind of give an idea how I'm doing this Jillian this is amazing work I'm so impressed right now oh thank you <laughs> thank you so much I have never if you want to know the God's honest truth I have never in my life done anything like this I haven't I haven't darned anything I haven't repaired anything I'm literally I actually told my friend I was kind of excited because I felt like this will stretch my skills and I will learn new things from this so for me this is a big learning opportunity but I also I kind of like want to show say look you can repair things that get damaged and it won't be the same ever again but you can but also hopefully like showing this like shows everybody that we are all more capable of what we realize I'm gonna zoom my camera in so you can kind of see this more closely. Focus. Focus camera. Have to go a little bit. Oop, there we go. Okay. Did I make it blurry? Here, I'm going to just go over my webcam. Um, oh, this is my knee. I'm going to wipe my lens off a little. I'm going to just use my finger to do it. <laughs> okay. There we go. Here we go. All right. So it's a little blurry because I have it so zoomed in. But there were five stitches that ended up missing from this cast on row. What I did was separately, I cast it on five stitches. And again, this is where, thankfully, the original knitter, she just did a long tail cast on. So I was able to just use a long tail cast on to cast on five stitches. And then I grafted, I just used um, the ends and reattached it to the stitches that were still stable enough to exist. I tried initially, I thought, well, maybe I could just cast on new stitches like from the edge as if I were casting on stitches after doing a thumb gusset, and I tried that, but frankly, I wasn't satisfied. It just, it was very clearly a different cast on, and I was like, it's nothing for me to cast on five stitches and then just attach it here. So that's what I did. I've attached it here, and I'm now knitting the patch up from this point on. I'm doing this section a little differently though because one thing about that second section that I knitted and doing like one strand at a time I have so many ends to weave in which isn't necessarily my favorite thing but that's not why I'm doing it differently it's very it's gotten very bulky because there's so many places that I'm weaving in those ends it's just gotten very bulky um, and I want to not have that much bulk in this area because this rip is very long it starts down here in the cast on and then it travels all the way up and it gets to a point where it's just one column of stitches that are missing so what I'm doing in this case instead is I am knitting across then when I get to the last stitch instead of turning and knitting back because then you get that you know that edge stitch that happens when you're knitting flat I'm taking the yarn and I'm duplicating the next stitch and then I'm kind of doing a little U-turn with the yarn to get it to go back the other way and then knit back across. So I'm sort of knitting and grafting this patch onto the, the original blanket as I go along. That's how I'm doing this section. 
And again, whoops, it took me kind of a few days, a couple of days, a day really, to figure out how I was going to approach this repair. And then it's taken me a couple of days to actually get a result that I was happy with. So Bear, I am so impressed too. I had no idea how you were going to be able to fix it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm going to, I there are some good videos. Actually, let me pull up this camera. Yeah, there are some good videos on YouTube about how to do um, repairs behind beyond the traditional darning, because traditional yarning, darning, <laughs> It really is about weaving yarn into, like, you have a hole, and you take yarn and you put it across the hole, and then you weave vertical. And so you're really weaving a patch into the hole, and it's just very clear that you have a patch, because it's not even knitting. What I'm doing instead is really um, re-knitting these sections, and trying to blend the patch into the work, to make it look as seamless as I can. Um, again, I can only get one side looking reasonable. The other side, you're, you know, you're going to be able to see where <laughs> this is where the, the mistake, the rip occurred. So, um, you know, this side you can see it. And again, this side is pretty trimmed already. Um, but this is I think the most challenging hole to deal with because there were no stitches I could build off of because the cast on was missing completely. That was really challenging. The, the second hole I was like I can get to a number of stitches that are stable enough that I can get my knitting needle into and work my way up but this one was very challenging because like there were no stitches. They were literally gone. I mean so yeah that's what's happening with the blanket project. It's, and everything is sort of taking a little bit of a back seat right now to doing this <laughs> in terms of my crafting and my knitting because like my, my friend whose blanket this is, um, she just had a second child. And so I kind of like, oh, I want her daughter to be able to get this blanket back because she does love it. And yeah, so that's what's going on with the blanket. I'm slowly but surely making progress and um, I originally thought maybe I would try to do a lot of this on camera and sort of vlog the process but that's just too much <laughs> as I'm trying that's just too much because I'm really kind of figuring out each section how I'm going to do it as I go along I and it's a lot of problem solving as I go along and then it's like once I solve the problem then it's like okay how do I now do this in such a way that I actually get results that I'm happy with but I think after the end of this I will probably maybe knit up some samples and kind of re reconstruct various techniques various ways I went about handling this and do a video on that um, just to kind of like here's what I learned through this process because I'm learning a lot. I am learning a lot um, as I go through this. And I, you know, I can't, okay. Oh, I can't, it's hard for me to talk about this. So when I got married, it was a Jewish wedding. And in Jewish weddings, you have the chuppah. And the chuppah is a four corner canopy and you stand under it during the wedding. And I knitted, my chuppah canopy. I designed it and I knitted it and it was a five by five square of chuppah canopy that was knitted in fingering weight yarn. Yes, I knitted a five foot by five foot basically an afghan like item um, on fingering weight yarn. <laughs> it took a really long time. Anyway, uh, I love it. I love it and mods got to it. And it is so painful for me whenever I think about it because it's not completely like destroyed and I have it. Part of me is always sat there and go at some point when you're ready, you can repair a lot of these holes and mend this. But it's, 
It's something like, but I don't have the skills yet. So this blanket has kind of given me the courage, first of all, the experience to tackle that, but also the courage of like, okay, I can, there are things I can do. It's still going to be tricky though with the Hoopa canopy because there's actually lace involved with it. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I want to cry every time I think about it because like, I love it. I had visions of like being able to, with like my child someday got married going, here is my Hoopa canopy. Would you like this to use this? Or I'll knit you one of your own if you don't like the colors. But like, just, oh, just the fact that moths, like, I hate moths. I almost dropped an F-bomb. I hate moths so much. Me dropping an F-bomb is actually not a big deal, but I try not to do it on camera. Anyway, oh girl, the editing time required to be like a project of that detail is intense. I know, right? You know, Jillian, you know. Yeah, it's intense, but it's also not just the editing, but it's also, because I could edit that little by little and have other things going on, but it's also just the shooting it. Like, being on camera, in here, the overhead, the whole thing. It's intense. Like, those things are not, it's not easy to shoot that. It's not. There's a reason why whenever I have, like, like the sock heel, uh, the strong heel, like, I knitted up the sample. And if you want to know the, tr did I put this, did I put this in the, in the outtakes? I, that was not one complete sock heel in that video. Behind the scenes secret, uh, that sock heel and the strong heel, the sample that I knit, that was actually three different samples. I knitted a section so that I could have enough on camera so you could see what was going on, and then I got the second sample that was further along in the project and picked up from there. So, yeah, I because, <laughs> like, A, it would take a long time to film the entire knitting of that sock heel. It would take some time. And B, it was just B easier to edit it down. So, yeah. Little behind the scenes secret and shooting tutorials. All right. So that was the blanket repair. It is an ongoing project. Like I said, if you want to keep up to date on what is happening with it, uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, I will tell you right now, my Instagram photos are, I think, delightful, but they are not professional. <laughs> I don't do the pretty, I mean, I try to make them pretty. I have an aesthetic that I'm trying to achieve, you know, but mostly I do not have time or the wherewithal, the mental energy to try to have these perfectly composed, lit, edited Instagram photos. I'm kind of, I am in a, and I get it, I get, I like looking at the pretty, pretty photos too. I like the, the, you know, the pretty, pretty, perfect Instagram photos. I love that other people do that. But I think also I'm kind of interested in like real craft life, what it's really like and not the illusion of what it's like. <laughs> so I think I try to bring that to my Instagram where it's like, this is, I'm knitting on my couch. <laughs> Here's my purple couch. Even my photos that I now use for when I um, announce my live stream or the Fiber Happenings update. Um, I got tired of always doing kind of the Canva Instagram post things for the Fiber Happening update announcement. So I've just started taking photos of my work area that I'm in when I finish and using that to do an Instagram post on the Fiber Happenings update. And even that is part of me going, this is what it's really like. This is what real craft, now don't get me wrong, there are people, my sister-in-law, amazing, her craft room is like photo perfect. Like she's just very organized and very clean about it all. I am not that person. I am cluttery. Like if you saw this area over here, I'm not going to show because I'm kind of embarrassed, but maybe I should just like get over that. I just need to clean it up and get it organized, and I've just been busy. I can't, I don't know with what, but I'm busy. <laughs> so anyway, that's a tangent on my Instagram and why my photos are not like trying to give some, like, it's, it's real life crafting. That's my Instagram photos. Okay, so let's... Let's go ahead. Normally I know I do pattern spotlight 
near the end. But let's go ahead and jump into Pattern Spotlight because I really want to talk about um, the big announcement that is on Fiber Happenings. So I'm going to make sure, okay, cool. I'm going to make sure I'm on the right thing as I bring up. There we go. All right. Oh, I can't move it. All right, so we're going to scroll down. And I'm going to try to scroll slowly so I don't give anyone, like, motion sickness. And I've put this under craftivism. Um, and that is Fasten Off, Yarn Along, 2020. Woo! This is so cool. So on... Can I... No. All right. Hi, Natalie! Welcome! Welcome, welcome! Thank you for joining today! So, on the website that shall be not, shall not be named, Ravelry, they, there is a big gift along that is done every year. It's organized by a, thir a, gr a group of people, but they use Ravelry for this gift along. Um, and they've been doing it for years, and the gift along is, um, Designers sign up, they offer patterns at a discount, people can get them, and then, you know, they make them and share photos with each other on a Ravelry forum. And this has been going on for years, but obviously with the recent issues <laughs> with Ravelry and accessibility, um, the gift along is not accessible for many, many people. And there was conversation a few months ago on Twitter about the gift along and you know the people who organize the gift along they've been doing this for years and I don't know the conversations all the conversations they had um, but they decided to move forward doing the gift along this year on Ravelry as they always had and I think my sense was they felt badly about it but also that they didn't have the resources or the wherewithal to provide a alternative to doing the gift along on Ravelry for people. So, yes. <laughs> yes, Natalie, I agree. I'm so excited. Natalie says, I'm so excited about this event. Fasten Off 2020 sounds right on point. Yes. So, two different people kind of at the same time, both whom I adore, mutual follows on Twitter, um, parasocial relationship is high, is Kathleen Sperling of Whip Insanity and Rachie Nguyen of Rachie Nguyen Designs both separately had the idea of organizing a big yarn along holiday event in the mode of, in the same kind of thought process as the gift along but having an accessible place for it. And they have joined forces together to put together the uh, Fasten Off Yarn Along 2020. So actually yesterday was the deadline for designers to sign up. And last I checked, they have 72 designers who have signed up to offer a discount on patterns that you can go and purchase and be a part of the Fasten Along. So they have their... Um, let me desktop share. There we go. So they have their web page up and it's on withinsanity.com's website. You can get the link on Fiverr Happenings and the discount period is going to be starting on December 25th. So that is three days away. So in three days, December 25th through December 5th is the discount period. So if you want to take a look, take a part. Take in part. Why can't I? <laughs> why can't I say this? If you want to take part in the Fasten Off 2020, uh, you can. The discount period is going to be starting in three days, and it will go until December 5th. Buy a pattern of your choice, and um, you can be a part of it. And there's an online sign-up form for people to join in. There'll be prize giveaways for people who are sharing the progress on their project. And I know of at least one designer who is going to be donating a portion of her sales from the Fasten Off to the, um, oh, 
what's it called? It's Stacey Abrams' um, organization in, in Georgia. And I'm, the name, I'm completely blanking on it, and I don't have it in front of me right now. So this is very exciting. On the website, there is a pattern database of all the discounted patterns. And if you, this is something you want to take part in, I highly encourage you to check it out. Again, on Fiber Happenings, there's all the links. You can sign up for the news. Excuse me. Burp City. Sorry. Um, but you can sign up for the newsletter so that you get updates on the Fasten Off in your inbox all the time. And I just think it's absolutely amazing that just how quickly... Um, Kathleen Sperling and Rachel Newitt have pulled this together and big round of applause. Big, big, big round of applause to them. Uh, and both of them are on the Fiber Indie list. Rachel Newitt is a crochet designer. Kathleen Sperling is a knitwear designer. They are both on the Fiber Indie list. Check out their work. They're both great. <laughs> so. Oh, great. Thank you, Natalie, for letting me know. Natalie just let us know that there is a, the designer sign-up deadline was moved to midnight tonight. So if you are a designer watching and you want to sign up to be a part of this, you still have time to sign up. You have till midnight tonight. So um, I just think this is amazing. And I love that in the light of the disruption that has occurred in the Fiberverse from the issues with the website that won't be named Ravelry, that um, people have really pulled together to create spaces so that everybody has somewhere to go, an accessible place on the internet for their crafting. And I, I love it. I think it's amazing. And that's why I put it under craftivism, because <laughs> it's about accessibility. Um, so that is what's happening. I'm going to actually... I'm going to go skip down further in the Fiber Happening list real quick since we're already talking about knit-alongs. Where are you? There we go. There is another separate... Oh, that's... Oh. Oh, I got to fix that. Okay. Um... Mm. Okay, this is how I'm going to do it. It's from... I... Sorry, I just realized I made a mistake on the fiber happenings, and I'm going to have to fix that as soon as live stream is over. Um, so big apologies to Knitting Tutor that I had that mistake. But here, the Knitting Tutor has her own knitting uh, knit along going on called the Bobble Along. Uh, the link should be good if you go to my website and you click on the link, you'll be taken to the proper place. Hers is happening on Facebook, and you can make these little bobbles post them with the Facebook group, and there are prize giveaways. So that is another um, make-along that is happening this holiday season. And I have to say, if I had a Christmas tree, I won't because I'm Jewish and I don't have a Christmas tree. But um, these baubles are so cute. And, um, yeah. Of course, I could easily knit this up for when I have Sukkot, and someday I actually put a Sukkot up. <laughs> That is the other knit along that is on Fiber Happenings. These are so cute. I agree, Natalie. These are adorable. I think they are so cute. And this is another one of these projects that you could easily use your, like, scrap yarn for. Like, any, like, little remnants of balls that you haven't known what to do with. This is a great project. I could also see knitting a bunch of these up and then sewing them together into, a, like, a wreath. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, a, just a winter wreath? I think that'd be so neat. So um, that is the other knit along that is up on Fiber Happenings. Sure, let's catch up on the new patterns. Just getting up to the top here. Okay. So there were a ton of new pattern releases this past week. Not surprising. We're getting near the end of the month. And it's the holidays, but there are some. So let's just take a quick look at them, shall we? Uh, okay. So first we have here the Make With Meggie. Oh, she has two, pa this is what's going on. Make With Meggie has two new patterns up on her website. She, I should have reversed this. She has this hat, which is the Foothills 
hat pattern. This is a crochet pattern and it is a beanie. This would be, as she said, great for, it's unisex. This would be a great gifting um, project because it's unisex. It comes in a variety of sizes and you can make it fit pretty much just about anyone. I'm gonna go to the Etsy store though so that you can see more of this. Um, and you can see the other project she has. So she has this Fox Hill, Foothill, sorry, Foothills Hat Crochet Project. It's unisex. And I, yeah, I totally agree that it would be a great gifting project. Or you can make it for yourself. Um, so for the crochet lovers out there, you have this great pattern. It's really cute. And da, 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 here we go. Another photo here. Um, you can put the palm on it. Actually, oh, that's a good segue into my Michaels thing. Oops, click too fast. I love this, doing it in two colors. I think that's super cute. And the thing with this hat is you can make it like a fitted beanie or you can make it a slouchy hat. I'm personally always a big fan of the slouchy hat. I don't like hats that just stick right to my head. That's why I'm always wearing tans and things of that nature. I like a good slouchy beanie though. I, I'm, I, the slouchy beanie is a, is a classic for me. It's, it's, it's always appropriate. Never goes out of style. Her other project is this low throw pillow. This is a corner to corner crochet project. And this here in the middle is a modern interpretation of the classic Christmas light bulb. What I love about this project is it is something that depending on the colors that you use, really can be a festive holiday decoration that you pull out the holidays to put on your couch. Um, or if you do it in the colorways that's shown here in the photo, which is very blues and grays, this could be in any time of year, just fun throw pillow in your home. So it, it, it it's something that you really can do almost anything with to make it an all year round project or a you know fun festive holiday project. So that is from Make with Maggie. And I just, her work, I, we're back on this page. Yeah, I love her work because I just, these animal one, blankets that she's done with the panda and the raccoon, they're just so adorable. <laughs> just all so adorable. Um, okay. Next we have... Uh, this is from Victoria Marchant Knits, and she has been doing an entire series of fingerless gloves. And I'm gonna say right now, this might be my favorite of them that I have seen. This is the Hearth Project, and this is a Fair Isle Project, and it is just so, her color choice for this glove, I think is so pretty. I love this kind of greenish blue with the red, but you could use any of them. And if you haven't done Fair Isle before, just looking at the photos, this would actually be a really nice introduction to doing stranded color work if you've never done it before, because all the stranded color work is happening in the areas of the fingerless glove that aren't shaping, and it's not a ton of rows of it. You do a little bit here at the cuff, and then you have a nice break as you work the palm and the thumb gusset, and then you get up to the top of the cuff and you have some more fair isle knitting to do. Um, this is knitted with DK weight yarn. Excuse me, I have to scratch my nose. And I just, I think this is so cute. And it's not even just cute, it's just lovely. Looking at them, her photos, by the way, I'm gonna just give a shout out to her product photos as well, because these photos are just so calming and so pretty. And um, I love, I just realized the middle one, she's making a heart with her thumb and her four fingers. But um, if you're going to be like, yeah, I just, I think these are great. And these might be the last in her fingerless glove series, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. Next we have from Yarn Addict by Anakin Alice, the Clovely. The Clovely is interesting. This is a project that you can make either as a poncho, you can sew up one seam and have a poncho, 
or you can leave it unseamed and have a stole. And this is a lace rib pattern that is knitted on the bias. So I really love when projects are knitted on the bias because it just creates a lovely directionality to these stitch patterns that it's just not up and down. It's going to run on a diagonal that's always a little bit more dynamic. Uh, I love the color choice that she just has in this photo. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and this is just really pretty. And I'm going to go to her pay hip store to look at this more closely because I think this is probably one of those patterns that the lace itself is probably not as complicated as it may look at glance because can I go in closer? Let's see. Wait. I thought there was a way to click in this more closely. Oh, you can really see it here. And this is made with um, three skeins of yarn, she said. So I just think it's lovely. It's a lovely pattern. You can see the poncho version here on her shoulder. That is the side seam that she put in. So really lovely pattern if you're interested in doing some lace knitting. This is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And I think that, is that the last new pattern? Yes. The, oh, well, this was from last week when I didn't have my live stream. But this is the, just real quickly, this is another new um, shawl from Aclory Design, which is Tunisian crochet. This is the Escalera wrap. Um, she did each row of this in a different color. And this is, looks like it's basically um, a chevron pattern. And she rated it as a beginner pattern. And then we scroll down to Louise Tilbrook, another one of my mutual follows on Twitter. And yes, she's on all everybody's on the Fiber Indie list that's here in Fiber Happenings. But this is her new cow, the Barn Door Cow. And I love this cow. I love the textured pattern of it. It's just lovely. And I'm not certain, I haven't asked her, but it's either a slip stitch pattern or what's called a dip stitch pattern. But it has these lovely elongated um, row knit stitches. And it's just, I think, lovely. It's cow. People talk about sweater weather. I like cow weather. Weather, weather. Um, and Periwinkle Dragon Designs, who has some of my favorite and some of the most unique designs I've ever seen. She has this White Water Rapids fingerless mitts that is just, again, lovely. And um, this has elongated stitches that twist together that make these little textured stitches. And I think this is a very approachable design from um, Periwinkle Dragon. So that, I believe, is, yes, that's all of the new patterns from the last couple of weeks that have come out um, for that are on Fiber Happenings. By the way, here is my plan moving forward. Um, I think at the end of each month, I'm going to try to have a blog post where I just provide the links to all the new pattern releases that occurred. Maybe not have all the photos and um, embeds that I have when I do the fiber happenings because that gets a little like intense in terms of the website. <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of HTML. So, um, but I'm going to try to, at the end of each month, have a blog post where I just have links to all the new pattern releases. So, like, there's sort of a, a little bit of an archive of fiber happenings moving forward. Um, I should have thought of that sooner, but better late than never. Fair. Oh, those are so sweet. I've never done color work, and that pattern makes me want to give it a try. I love doing strand and color work. I haven't done it in a while, but I really enjoy it, and I agree. I look at that, and I'm like, I want to do that. Maybe I haven't checked yet. Hopefully, Victoria has that listed for the fasten off. Wouldn't that be great? But um, yeah, actually, stranded doing stranded color work is why I learned how to knit continental so that I could knit with yarn one in each hand. Um, I have done well, tried doing stranded color work with just continental or just uh, my right English style knitting, 
I will say I do think it's easiest to do with, with, with one in each hand. But that is a reason if you are an English style knitter to learn how to knit continental and vice versa. If you're a continental, learn how to knit English so you can um, do stranded color work with yarn in both hands. I will say if you're only going to hold yarn in one hand, it is easier to do continental um, color work, stranded color work with both yarns in one hand. I will give continental that check mark that it is easier um, to do it. You can do it with English style as well. You can. It's just a little slower and a little trickier. Fair. Good to know. Yes. Okay. So we are getting close to the end. I think we might run a little bit long. Just a couple minutes. Just a couple minutes. Um, but I did want to show you real quickly what I got at Michael's. Now, this isn't like the most exciting haul in the world. I don't think. But maybe you don't think it is. Maybe you think it is. I, there was something I saw that I was like, ooh, ooh, th could this, could this be a new favorite notions? Well, let me show you. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how excited I get about knitting notions. Like, um, oh, not what I wanted. Not what I want. There we go. Now that I'm not doing desktop share, I'm going to switch back to studio mode. Oh, that's not even the one I want. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. All right, so here's the thing. All right, so, for, well, I'll show you the first thing. Not the mo thing I'm most excited about in terms of Notion. So I have needed new um, plastic clover interlocking stitch markers. It's the one, other than my bulb pins, the clover locking stitch markers are the stitch markers I use most often. So of course that's always the one that I have the least of because they're just missing all the time. Um, so I got these. These are not the, can I open them do I have scissors nearby me? Oh, why do they always make it so hard to open these? This packaging. Oh, I do have, <laughs> I do have scissors nearby. I'm going to open this up so you can see it better. So exciting. It's an unpacking. <laughs> anyway, use my embroidery scissors to open these up. Um, so these are what they call their quick locking stitch markers. In my vlog, I think I talked about these. These are a little more expensive than the regular locking stitch markers. These were like seven something dollars. But they're supposed to be quick locking. Let me see if I can hold them. See them, and I don't know if you can see them here. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can tell. Come on, focus. But the the stitch marker. Oh, you can kind of. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to figure this out. The stitch marker. Um. Oops. Zoom out. Zoom out. Um. Is a little wavy, and this is supposed to help not stretch the stitches. But they're supposed to be quick locking. Oh, okay. I will say I just pressed this closed and that was very, very quick. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why that's quicker. Is it quicker? Do I have one of my regulars to compare it to? <laughs> yes, here it is. Okay. I will say, I think it might be, the plastic might be a little thinner. So maybe it moves more easily. So this is the regular clover locking stitch marker. Well, I don't know. Yeah, this plastic's a little thinner. Oops. Alright, I I will say I think it does lock a little bit faster. Does it does it lock so much faster that I'm like, whoa, that is worth the extra two dollars? No. Not at first glance, but I need to work with them more with the project and see how I feel about them. But yes, apparently this little like bit of wrinkling that goes on here, that is not the correct word. What, is, what do they say? Lock type stitch marker. It can also be used in the unlocked position. It's undulated, undulated. That's a fancy word. It's undulated design prevents stretching of knitted stitches. Could be true, could not be true. I have no idea. Do the waves and the quick ones help keep them from falling out? I think so. Um, and I think that's why it says they can be used in the unlocked position. 
because I think the undulation might help keep them in place better than these. Um, I think these do tend to like slip out. And also, I will say, I guess if you have any kind of, um, this one, I think if you have any kind of hand strength issue, you might like these better. Oops, somebody a little sucker. Because the thinner plastic, it doesn't take as much pressure to get them to close. I mean, not that these take a whole lot. I mean, but they're definitely thicker and they definitely take a little bit more force. So um, if hand strength is an issue, you might like these better. Um, the ones I hate, do I have one in here? Oh, I hate these. I got these from free. So I can't really say a whole much. I got these from free from, I think they came with my, um, um, Haya Haya needles, but these are really thick. They're harder to close. And what's worse is they barely open. Like, you, it's really hard actually to slip these on a stitch because this barely opens. I don't like these at all. I didn't mean to try them. Now I think I will. You know what? And honestly, like, Michael's always has a 20% off coupon right now. Like, always. It's like a permanent feature with them now. They always have a 20% off coupon. Use if if you use the 20% off on this, you'll save it like a dollar or so. Um a dollar and a half maybe. So uh or you might be able to find them for less expensive on Etsy or Amazon or eBay. But yeah, I I, I have to say I am now kind of excited to give these a try. Um so there's that. But there was something else, there was something new. There was another new stitch marker from, and this was Michael's Brands Loops and Thread, and it's these. I'm going to open these up now, and I'm so curious about these because I know I've talked about these before, right? Let me move over to the other overhead. Okay. I know I've talked about, where are you? I know I've talked about these before. These are the split ring stitch markers, which I thought would be so great. I thought this would be like the perfect in between between a ring marker that's always closed and a locking stitch marker. Like I thought, oh, this will be so convenient when I just need to put a stitch marker on real quick and have it be saved and not have to deal with locking and unlocking anything. And they don't work at all. <laughs> it's not that they don't work. They fall off really easily. I think maybe they'll be better for crochet. I don't know. But I don't love these. I kind of hate them. I regret buying them. They're not that they're expensive, but Loop and Thread has these. And this is a loop of plastic, and it opens up like this, and then it closes back up. And I think this is going to turn out to be what I had hoped the split ring marker would be. So I'm really excited to try this out <laughs> while I'm knitting. My only concern is, you know, in trying to insert this, will it... Um, split the fibers? Will I be able to slip it into a loop very easily? I don't know. We'll find out. But um, I'm really excited to try out this stitch marker. But I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's a brilliant idea because it doesn't lock. But because the two legs of this loop overlap, like, I don't think this, this is, I don't think this will easily fall out. I think also the teardrop shape will keep it from easily falling out of a stitch. So um, we will have an update at some point about my trying out these different stitch markers because y'all know I take my stitch markers very seriously. <laughs> I have very strong opinions about my stitch markers. I know what I want from them and I think it's really important to have stitch markers that you like using. Like I think that is actually like, I don't know. I Part of me laughs at myself about how excited I get over stitch markers. Like, I'm, I sit there, I'm like, it's kind of silly. It's kind of silly. But at the same time, I use stitch markers so much to help keep track of my work. Um, so often they work as my row counter and my, my, my project progress tracker that, and I use these, like, when you drop a stitch, there's just so many things that you need a good 
stitch marker for. So I'm always in kind of on the hunt for like, is that the better idea? Is that the more useful one? Is that even better? And let's be honest. Let's be honest for a second, shall we? In knitting and craft, in knitting and crochet, it's not like we get a whole bunch of new product releases and tools that come out for us to get really excited about. Just not what happens with knitting. All right. Fair. Split ring ones always fall out while I was working on crochet projects. I was disappointing them too. Yeah. I think, like I said, I regret buying them. I look at them every... If I knitted on straight needles, which I don't, they would work fine as just a ring stitch marker that I could put on to mark out repeats. But... I'm trying to think if they fell through the cable. I can't remember now because I never used them. I regret buying them. They weren't terribly expensive. This isn't like I bought a bad eyeshadow palette and I'm sitting there going, oh crap, I spent $50 on an eyeshadow palette that I hate. Which thankfully has never happened. <laughs> but it's not that kind of thing. Alright, last item that I bought. And there's a reason I bought it besides just why not. I'm feeling, you know, uh, this is, nope, this is, okay. I did go ahead and purchase the Clover pom-pom maker. I got this one, which is a set of two. I'm really sorry. I feel like this is, like, too bright right here today. I feel like then my camera won't focus. Um, it's out of focus, and I can't get it to focus. Like, I can't get the camera to focus right now. Um, but I got these pom-pom makers. The, here's why I got them. And I got this set. I had the 20% off coupon, so this was like around between $7 and $8. So I got between like $5 and $6 with the 20% off coupon. So not a bad deal uh, at all. The reason I got this was on one of my many Facebook groups that I'm on, somebody asked if having a pom-pom maker is worth the expense. And I thought it was a really good question. I'm like, I don't know. So I was like, I've always been tempted to buy one anyway, <laughs> so why not, why not go ahead and just purchase one, or in this case two, because this was a good value, and test this out versus a DIY, you know, piece of cardboard, I think you can use a piece of cardboard, to make a pom-pom, compare the two and see, is this a gadget that actually makes your crafting life better? And I think I want to do a video where I look at a couple of different things and go, is this tool, this gadget worth buying? Or are you better off just kind of with the inexpensive DIY version of this idea? So that is a video that I'm going to be working on. I think it'll be a fun video. It'll be kind of like a little bit like, I think it's going to be like a, 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 a save or splurge. That's kind of what I think it's going to be, is like, is this a save or a splurge situation? So that's why I got this, and I'm excited to test them out, because pom-poms are adorable, and who doesn't occasionally want a pom-pom? <laughs> and they also had the little tiny mini pom-pom maker that were really inexpensive that I thought about getting instead, but I'm like, no, let me get a good size pom-pom maker. Um, so I'm going to be doing a comparison between this and a more DIY method of making pom-poms and I think I'm also going to look at just um, a couple other different types of tools where you have the option of buying the you know the gadget or just a DIY solution and seeing which one is the better idea so if anyone has ideas on like products that they've seen they're like hey is that worth it or can I do it for less let me know what that item is and I will consider it for this save or splurge video that I have in mind. So that's what I got at Michael's. That was the Michael's haul. <laughs> I know, super, super exciting. But, you know, not everything can be like, you know, the pretty, pretty yarn. Okay, so it is time to start wrapping things up. So Friday's video is up. It is me washing and blocking the cowl project that if you've been watching me for a while, you are well aware of. I'm going to be honest, it's kind of flopping. <laughs> it's like 
11 views. I'm so sad. And the reason I'm sad is because it's actually, I think, a funny video. I think it's a funny video. Um, I tried to make washing and blocking as entertaining as I could. Let me just put it that way. Um, but here's my question. I have a part three. I know. I never thought that Cal Project would be three videos finishing it, but I spent way longer than I probably needed to discussing how to weave in ends. Anyway, uh, I have one more video to go in it, and that is the actual seaming the cowl together. But does everyone need a break from the cowl? Because the other video I could put up next is on short rows. So let me know if you have an opinion, whether you're watching on playback, let me know in the comments below. Um, or let me know right now in the chat, and I'm going to put a poll up on my Instagram and ask what would you like to see next? Me seaming together the cow, or me discussing the um, Knitting Secrets Reveal short row video? That is the question. So one of those two will be on Friday, and then the other video will be probably the following week. Um, and as always, if you have video suggestions for me, I would love to hear about them. Um, in fact, I got a video request the other day, but it's like slipping my mind right now. I wrote it down. So that is next. Um, coming up, we should still have Knit Tea Live. I'm planning to still do it next Sunday. Unless people are like, no, it's holidays, no need. But I'm planning to do a Knit Tea Live next Sunday regardless. Um, and yes. I think that's everything. So thank you for watching today's live stream. As always, please make sure if you have not already, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please give this video a thumbs up. I've had such a great time today. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you have any suggestions, video ideas, Carrie, I want to hear more about this. I don't want to hear so much about that. Please let me know down in the comments down below. Um, and I think if you want to follow me on social media, all my social media is down in the description box. And yeah, I think that's everything. So I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I hope you have a great Thanksgiving, however you are celebrating it. I know many of us are going to be having Thanksgivings that may not be what we have grown up with, what we are used to. And I know that's really difficult, but... I hope we all are able to find joy in reimagining sometimes what we can do with this holiday because Thanksgiving is not canceled. It's not. And it doesn't need to be. So have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And yeah, see you next time. And as always, happy health and happy knitting. Bye.